Hi, it's Laurie. I wanted to make a video this morning for those of you who are studying astrology but do not yet have your own um, astrology program. I know a lot of people before before they're ready to make that investment in a real professional program use some of the online resources. Now, I, I, one of the things that happens quite frequently is you don't know, you don't know what you don't know, and you just automatically go in there and use the default settings that that um, website or, or program has set up for you. So what I want you to do specifically for my own students, I, I want you to know um, what what settings to change in there. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go right to astro.com and look at how to set this up in a way that's really going to work for you, particularly if you're studying with me. Okay, so let's see. First, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go right here. And what you should see right now is I just went to www.astrolore.com. This is an amazing resource in many ways. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is to set yourself up an account. Because once you've got yourself set up an account, you can save your preferences, you can save charts that you've put in there. And um, yeah, so first thing you want to do, once you've got your, your account set up, is go click on free horoscopes. That's going to bring you to this page here where you can first, first thing you're going to want to do is go into chart drawing and you're going to put in your own information. Um, what will happen? I've got one chart in here and it's my own. But when you get in here, you're going to want to add a new person. You're going to just put in the information. It will um, set that up for you. So once you've got one chart in the system, then you're going to be able to set up your preferences. And for this, we're going to go to this piece here that says Extended Chart Selection. We're going to just go in here, and we're not going to pay attention to everything. We're going to the natal chart wheel is what we're looking for. Um, the web default style as far as the chart drawing, that's fine. You want to go um, here. And when you first open this up, it's going to say default. And what you want to do is set that to whole signs. Let me tell you, if I haven't ranted on about this already to you, I have struggled with sign, sign uh, with um, house systems for 45 years. And I finally, finally, finally found what works so much better than anything I've ever worked with. I love whole signs. I could carry on about that. I'll resist the temptation at the moment. Um, but set that to whole signs, particularly if you're working with me. Now, um, what you want to do next is to go down here under aspects, and you want to click on True node, mean node, you know, quite frankly, there's very little difference and um, astrologers don't seem to agree on it. I use mean node. So click on mean node and now for aspects, click on major aspects, click on add orb in additional tables and put 80% in this box here. Um, they have it set up for a default to have like 10 or 12 degrees orb. I think that's too much. So set that at 80%. And then you're going to click here. And that will bring you back. That will show you the chart with the way we now have it set up. Now, what you want to do before you do anything else is save default settings. Once you've clicked that, then this is the way, this will be your personal default settings that we've just set up. So there's that. Now, um, if you click here, additional tables, PDF, I want you to see this, what this will bring up. 
this brings up a data sheet and it gives us a lot of information. Um, it also tells us down here what the orbs are for the major aspects and then what they would be for the minor aspects if we were using them. We're not. Um, all this other information probably at this point in time you don't really uh, need to know anything more than what we've got here. Now the other thing I want you to know about here is if we go back to that free horoscope page, that first page that we were on, and I want to talk to you about an ephemeris. Jenny and I are going to be doing a video very soon, I hope, about why you need an ephemeris, what an ephemeris is, and how to use it. Now, for our purposes, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a minute so that I can show you. Okay, we all need an ephemeris. If you're serious about an astrology, um, about really learning it, you need an ephemeris. Now, this is the American ephemeris for the 21st century from the year 2000 to the year 2050 at midnight. Great book to have. I also have the American Ephemeris for the 20th century, 1900 to 2000 at midnight. You can see it's been well, well worn and well loved. Um, what you can purchase is the American Ephemeris from the year 1950 to the year 2050 um, at midnight. I would recommend that should be the one that you should get. I think it's a purple book. You can get it on Amazon. Um, you can order it somewhere locally if you'd rather. But make sure you have that book in the meantime. And if for some reason you're not ready to make that kind of a commitment yet, you can use, let me go back to where we were. Let's share this screen again. Okay, go back to this page, create an ephemeris. And here you can show the ephemeris. We can have um, here start date, 2018. So this is going to just give us the entire year of the ephemeris. We'll click here and it's going to bring up really a very beautiful copy of the ephemeris. If all we needed was a year at a time, this would be a great way to go. But you can see here um, that, let me just show you real quick what this is. Here's March. Today is the 18th. So this just shows all the movement, exactly where each planet is um, on every day. Okay. So on the 18th, the sun is at 20. Here's the sun. Here's the sign it's in, Pisces, and today it's at 27 degrees. You see next Wednesday, the 21st, it's going to enter Aries. You see where the Aries is. Actually, I could be using this to show you. Okay, there's where it goes into Aries. Mercury is also in Pisces. Today it is at... Oh, yeah, the moon is in Aries. Is that what I was talking about? I think I was talking about... Mercury enters, entered Aries earlier this month, blah, blah. Excuse me, I got a little lost. Uh, that will happen sometimes when you're looking at an ephemeris. So Mercury is in Aries at 15 degrees. Venus, at the beginning of the month, was in Pisces, entered Aries the same day that Mercury did, and is now at 13 degrees. You can see they're going hand in hand, these two. Mars... Um, started the month in Sagittarius, today enters Capricorn, etc. You can also see when you look at Mercury and go down this line, look, suddenly here, next Friday, there's an R. What does that mean? It's gone retrograde. Okay, so you can scroll down. Well, maybe you can scroll down here. Oh, the line stayed up there. 
but you can scroll down there and see where it goes direct. It goes direct on the 15th of April, which incidentally, you can also see there's some other massive movements. Oh no, not in April. Anyway, I'm, I'm carrying on. But that's how you can um, see the ephemeris. Use that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to touch on today. I think that should do it. Um, if you've got any further questions, if I missed something, let me know. I'll try to answer any of your questions. Okay. Love y'all.